I'm just going to go over a quick video on how to do some of the Word worksheet uh, for the 2-2-2. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and pull up the continuous probability distribution. And I know that I already have the, uh, the worksheet, but I'm just going to go over some examples. So I'm going to download this and uh, just go through it with you and... Uh, you know, hopefully clarify anything that you uh, might have, any questions that you might have. So um, we've got the definitions of the different, uh, you know, just some different definitions. You've got the empirical rule. Uh, this right here is very specific for uh, normal probability. So you've got normal probability, standard normal probability, symmetrical, um, so on and so forth. And so, uh, coming straight down here, this is building um, right off of uh, what you guys did on the 2-2-1 uh, worksheet. And so if you were to pull up the two of them side by side, uh, you would see, okay, 2-2-1, uh, discrete probability distribution worksheet. You open this up and uh, you'll see, okay, um, let's see here the quick trick gas station and then it says oh the you know same thing uh then uh, the subway uh right here you've got a subway uh coach is examining the recruit coach is examining the recruit and so you should have already uh determined um what type of probability distribution uh you have and then uh, there's a few more um there's a few more that uh, are added to it, but there's a total of eight questions. And so uh, let's take a look at some of these. So uh, coming right here, the quick trip gas station is looking into how much gas is sold at one location per day. The number of gallons sold can vary pretty evenly. Any amount from 3,000 to 6,500 gallons per day. What is the probability the station will sell 4,000 or less gallons? And so uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull up Excel really quick, file, new, uh, and let's just uh, do an example here, and let's do uh, 3,000 to 6,500 gallons. Uh, let's see here, 3,000, one, two, three, equals plus, I don't know, 100, or let's see equals this plus 500 and so we've got 3500 so on and so forth going all the way down and so you've got the minimum value uh and the maximum value uh so min and max and so we've got all of these let's go home i'm going to uh let's see here gray right here and then if we were to keep going all the way down, we would have a thick bottom border uh, and eventually right border. Uh, you know, this would go all the way down to zero. So but you've got your minimum, you've got your maximum, and uh, now we need to determine the probability. So um, the best way to do this is by pulling up your formula sheet. And so if you use up, uh, if you pull up your unit two formula sheet, uh, let's go ahead and pull that up, the printable resources unit two formula sheet, uh, and download this. You're going to see that um, you're going to see that it uh, has all of the information that you need in order to calculate, uh, you know, the different probabilities, so on and so forth, right here. So you've got the uniform probability distribution, binomial, normal, so on and so forth. And so let's uh, look right here. First of all, max and min. So max is just right here. So let's let's just go like this. Control C. Um, and then home. Left. This is weird. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we've got max and min. Uh, so what is the max? The max is going to be 6,500 because it's the largest number right over here. And then the minimum is going to be 3,000. And then what's the total range? That's just going to be the maximum minus the minimum. So what is 6,500 minus 3,000? That's going to be 3,500. 
Ah, okay. And then the range of the selection from 3,000 to 4,000. So just 3,000 to 4,000, that's going to be 1,000. And so that's uh, going to be right here. And so let's just make that a slightly different color. And then uh, what's the probability of selling between 3,000 to 6,500 gallons? In other words, what is the probability of this entire range? And remember, the probability of selling uh, of, of any probability distribution is 1. And so the probability of selling anywhere between 3,000 to 6,500 is just going to be 1 or 100%. Okay. Now, in order to be able to do the next uh, uh, next two, we're going to have to first calculate the height. And uh, remember, uh, we've got the base. So the range is a total of, uh, right here, uh, the total range, 3,500. And so the height, uh, I didn't ask you for the height, but what is the height? Okay. Remember, base times height equals the entire probability. Base times height equals... Um, one, and so you've got the base of 3,500, and then you've got the height of equals one over 3,500. Remember, it's going to be one over the height, and then equals base times height equals one. And so the probability of any one given outcome, so in this case, 3,000, 3,001, 3,002, 3,000, so on and so forth. This right here is the height, okay? And so we're going to paste the, the height right here, and that is roughly um, 0.02%, okay? And the reason why is because this is a very large range, okay? And so the probability of selling 4,000 or less gallons, well, the height stays the same, but now the base just changed. So now we've got a base of 1,000, we've got a height, and this is still the height, and so equals the base times the height, and that gives us a probability of 28.57. So 28.57 is the probability of selling anywhere between, or uh, the probability of selling anywhere between, or 4,000 or less gallons. So 4,000 down to 3,000. The probability of selling more than 4,000 gallons? Well, there's two ways of doing this. You can either do equals one minus 28.57, uh, or sorry, it's equals one minus, oh, I, that's why. There we go. Uh, 71, so 71.43%, uh, or, equals um, this range. So what is this range? 6,500 minus 4,000. Uh, that's going to be 2,500. And so we're going to do 2,500 and the height is still the same. And so we're gonna do equals the 2,500 multiplied by that right there and the, multiplied the probability of any one given outcome. And that gives us 71.42%, okay? Or 43% actually rounded up. So it gives you the same exact thing. And so that's how you do question one uh, with a uniform probability distribution. Okay. And then what is the average number of gallons sold per day? The average number of gallons is, uh, once again, you can look at the formula sheet. The formula sheet is going to say the mean is going to be A plus B divided by two. So right there, A plus B divided by two. And so uh, we've got... Let's see here. A plus B, 6,500 plus 3,000 divided by 2. Uh, so it's going to be 9,500 equals 9,500 divided by 2. So 47,000 or 47, uh, 4,750 is going to be the mean. Okay. And so the subway staggers its route by 30 minutes, so on and so forth. Um, and so the, the next one, you know, you guys can do that one by yourself. And uh, let's look at number three, though. A coach is examining a recruit for a basketball uh, for basketball who has a free throw average of 65%. If the player shoots 53 free throws during the season, he wants to know how many points he should expect to make. He expects the 65% accuracy to stay consistent. What is the most probable number of free throws he will make during the season? Uh, and what is the probability of him making 30 or less free throws during the season? 
Okay, so we need a few things. First of all, we know that this is a binomial probability distribution uh, because there's only two possible outcomes. Um, he is either going to uh, make the free throw or he is going to miss the free throw. And so first thing that we need to do is what is a success? So the the what is being the uh, defined as a success, uh, let's see here, is going to be uh, making a free throw. Um, okay. Uh, next, whoops. Um, probability of success. That's going to be sixty-five percent or point six five. Um, and then uh, fixed number of trials. That's going to be fifty. And then the next one is, uh, let's see, coaches examining the recruit. If uh, how many points should he expect to make? Uh, what is the uh, most probable number? Okay, most probable. Okay, and then the probability uh, of thirty or less. So this right here is going to be desired number of successes and then we'll say or less so we've got a fixed number of trials there's 50 uh then we've got what is the most probable outcome the most probable outcome uh which once again if we look at our formula sheet let's look at hold on uh we've got the mean and the mean is the most probable outcome. So the mean is going to be uh, the number of trials multiplied by uh, the probability. So right here, probability. Um, and so we've got equals 0.65 multiplied by, okay? And that's going to be 32.5. And so uh, the most probable outcome uh, is either gonna be 32 or 33, and we can uh, determine that in just a minute um so uh, and i'll show you how to do that in just a minute but this is the mean and the most probable whole number is going to be um either 32 or 33 or maybe they're equally probable uh so the desired number of successes uh we've got 30 um okay and then uh so now what we're going to use is we're going to use a, an excel formula and it's equals binome dot dist and then we're going to put the number the desired number of successes okay the set number of trials the probability of success at each trial and whether or not we want 30 or less we would put true or exactly 30 we would put false so we're going to put true so 30 or less is true and so um the probability of 30 or less is going to be 27 0.35 percent um but let's look at uh the most probable for a second okay what is the most probable what is, and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to calculate the probability of exactly 32 and exactly 33 so equals um binome dot dist uh 32 for the number of successes the number of trials is 50 the probability of success at each trial is going to be 65. And then we're going to put false because we want, what is the probability of exactly 32? And it says, hey, we don't like you. Um, okay, number of trials is 50. So number of successes, number of trials, probability of success, 0.65. Okay. And it still doesn't like me. Um, hold on. Fifty. Hmm. I don't know why it was doing that. It does weird things. Uh, so sometimes you just have to put the actual numbers in. So 32, 50, and then we're going to put false. 
So this is for 32, and let's do 33 uh, equals binome.dist. And then we're going to do the number of successes is 33. Number of trials is 50. Probability of success is 0.65. And cumulative is false because we want exactly 33. And you'll notice that 33 is slightly above. And so the most probable outcome is going to be 33 um, uh, with it being a whole number. And so, yeah. Um, let's see here. So the most probable outcome uh, is going to be 33. What is the probability of him making 30 or less is going to be 27.35%. Okay. Uh, let's look at a few more. Um, a school board is looking into how much students spend on lunch in the cafeteria. The amount that they spend on lunch are completely randomly dispersed. Now this randomly dispersed uh, between five and 10, um, when it's random, remember that word means something very specific and it essentially means it's uniformly distributed. Randomly means everything is completely random. So everyone's got an equally like equal, equally like likely chance. Okay. So you can do the same thing with this, uh, with uniform. Uh, a student organization is voting whether or not to enact a new rule into the club. The members can vote either yay or nay. There are 45 members in the organization. Uh, and so this is really important. Uh, there are 45 members in the organization when no probability is listed in the question, always assume that it's classical probability. Okay, so I didn't put any probability in here. So the student organization is voting whether or not the to enact a new rule into the club. The members can vote yay or nay. So the question is, is how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there's two possible outcomes. Well, if there's two possible outcomes, then what type of probability is this? Well, or what type of distribution should we use? And so uh, that's probably a binomial. And so there are 45 members in the organization. So how many people are voting? That's 45. And so that's going to give us a fixed number of trials um, of 45. And the probability of success, like I said, when it's not listed, you just put 0.5. Um, and then uh, what, what type of distribution? Well, I already gave you that. And then uh, what, is, what is a success uh, voting yay? Um, and then from there, you guys can uh, do the rest of this. And there is a fun little uh, formula to calculate the standard deviation of a binomial probability distribution. Um, and in order to do that, you do uh, the number of observations multiplied by the probability, multiplied by one minus the probability, and then you take the square root of that. Um, and so if I were to do that, I can show you really quick. Um, so what is the variance? Uh, we do equals 45 multiplied by uh, the probability multiplied by 1 minus 0. 0.5, okay? Um, and that gives you the variance. And then in order to get the standard deviation, just take the square root of that, but I'm not gonna do that for you because you guys can do that, okay? Um, and so, yeah, uh, what is the mean? Uh, once again, the mean is going to be uh, the, mo the probability multiplied by the number of trials. Um, yeah, so a teacher is examining how long it, uh, takes his class to complete an exam. The length of time for each for a selection of twenty for students report in minutes. Assume this is a normal distribution. What is the mean time it takes to take the test? What is the standard deviation? Um, and so uh, this is what I was talking about with z values. Uh, but we're going. I'm going to walk you through this really quick. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. Okay. And I'm going to paste it right here. Now, uh, this uh, what I'd suggest is putting this uh, in the same row. It's just going to make sure that you do everything correctly. And so um, have it all in the same thing. So what I did is I copied it and I pasted it. And then I cut this bottom row and I put it over on the right-hand side. So what is the mean time it takes to take the test? So first, we're going to do equals average. 
done. 45. What is the standard deviation? So a teacher is examining how long it takes to for his class to complete the exam. The length of times so of the selection of our 20 students are reported below. This right here is a population. Um, and the reason why is this is, it says for a selection. Oh, so the time for, for a selection of 20 of her students. So this is just a selection of, of 20 of her students. So this would be a sample. So there's 20 students. Um, uh, 20, I really should put 20 of, uh, her, let's do 20 of her 170 students, 20 of her 170 students are listed below in minutes. Okay. So what is the standard deviation? We're going to come right down here, use the Excel formula equals standard deviation of a sample. And we're going to boom. Okay. And so we've got the standard deviation right there. And so just equals standard deviation dot S and then I highlighted it and pressed enter. And then how many standard deviation is, is a particular value from the mean? Okay. So to find out how many standard deviations a particular value is from the mean, you need to do the following. You take the value minus the mean. So whatever value you're looking for. Um, so X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So coming right down here, uh, we've got, uh, the, okay, so let's come down here. How many standard deviations from the uh, value are the following values from the mean? Negative indicates the standard deviations are below the mean, while positive indicates that the standard deviations are above mean. So we've got the value of 60. So what we're gonna do is equals, so we're gonna, we're gonna do C right here, equals 60 minus, okay, the mean, uh, so 45, and we're gonna put this in parentheses. And then we're gonna divide it by the standard deviation. Okay, and so that gives us 60 is 1.2 standard deviations above the mean standard deviations above the mean, okay? So now we got 40. Um, C, D, 40. Uh, let's do, uh, and I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit. Equals 40, 40 minus 45 divided by the standard deviation and gives us 40 is 0.4 standard deviations below the mean. Now, uh, what's important to know is I told you guys about Z-scores. These are what are referred to as Z-scores. So this has a Z-score of 1.2. This has a Z-score of negative 0.4. A z-score, all that it is, is how many standard deviations a value is away from the mean. Uh, it's a little bit more than that, but not much more than that. So you guys can do E um, by yourself. And then uh, let's look at F really quick. So we're going to do equals 70. 70 minus 45 divided by the standard deviation. And so we're going to say that's right about two. And so remember the empirical rule, uh, you know, we can pull up that uh, really cool uh, worksheet that we had. Let's see here. Um, da, 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 QBA, unit one in class, or let's see here. I think it's this one. Yep. So we've got one standard deviation above the mean, two standard deviations above the mean, or more specifically coming down here, one standard deviation above, two standard deviations above. So the question is, what is the probability of something being below two standard deviations above the mean? 
And so let me make this, minimize this. So looking right here, using the empirical rule about what percent of students took less than 70 minutes. So uh, if we were to put the mean right here of 45, okay, um, and then you were to have tw uh, the you know this one standard deviation above, two standard deviations above, but two standard deviations above is seventy. So what percent of the observations are below two standard deviations above the mean? Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys can do number seven by yourself, and then yeah. So what is the z score for ten minutes? Once again, z-score, all that that means is what is this value right here? The uh, the number of standard deviations away something is from the mean. So there is uh, the video for um, just going over this. I gave you guys pretty much an example of everything uh, on this worksheet. So, um, But you guys can do the other ones.